This episode is sponsored by KiwiCo. DIY friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood DIYer, and this is a creative beast episode. What does that mean? That means we are stepping away from the norm content of home decor, furniture building, thrift flips to create a really freaking cool dope project. Sometimes they're nerdy, sometimes they're weird, sometimes we question the outcome. And hopefully by the end of it, we feel recharged, we feel energized, that's the same thing. My whole life, I have wanted to create my very own wand. Now, I actually own two wands, the Dumbledore wand. You guys have seen me put this in scenes all the time, I've used it in the past. And then I also own this wand. So this is like the one where you go through the whole wand picking thing, you go into the store at, at Ollivander, you pick the wand and then it has a little thing at the end and it like sets things off around the universal. Of course I bought one of these. It's just, you know, it just didn't feel right. This one doesn't call to me in the same way that I think a DIY homemade version would do. So, you know, I think uh, I think we can do better than this. And I wanna challenge myself to make my own wand. But before we jump into it, if you are not already subscribed to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We got more nerdy projects. Art projects, home decor projects, thrift flips, can I make it for cheapers, Pinterest made me do it. We do a lot on this channel, so you don't wanna miss it. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. All right, I've talked enough. Let's jump into this crazy, magical wand making episode. I don't know. Roll the tape. I don't know what this hand is doing. Good morning, DIY friends. Uh, it is very early. It's like six o'clock. I'm with Jess. We are on the road. We are on an adventure to Century Mill. This is a lumber mill just outside of Toronto. And I am on the search for the right type of lumber to build my wand. What I'm hoping is that just like in Harry Potter when he found the right wand for him, I want the wood to pick me. The wind is gonna blow my hair back and I'm gonna feel it in my heart that that is the wood for me. Ah. Ah. So I am on my way to meet Chris and Josh at Century Mill. They're gonna help me find the perfect wood for my wand, so let's go. This is Chris. Chris is an owner of Century Mill, a place that has 65 plus different types of woods from all around the world. Chris graciously walked me through the entire collection in hopes that the perfect lumber type would call to me instantly. We really cater to uh, artists and craftsmen types and uh, homeowners who are just looking for something a little special. That's and what I'm looking for, a special wood. So what is this? What is this? Because this is calling to me. That would be Purple Heart. Say that again? Purple Heart. It's Purple Heart? Uh, it's not the easiest to work with, but someone as skilled as yourself or magical oh. as you were saying earlier should have no issues with it at all. I'm feeling good about that, but let's let's walk me through some other options we got. This looks like a Slytherin type of uh, game, you know? It's like quite dark. Yeah. Some people find dark pretty sexy. Uh, if that's your thing, then Wangay is probably a good choice for you. Right. African Paduke, uh, it's got uh, quite a bit of red to it. It has that little fiery look to it. Right. After a full walkthrough of the entire collection, I think we all knew in our purple hearts that this lumber type was the option for me. <laughs> I mean, come on. This is this is the wood for me. Like, it feels it feels right. Joshy! Hey. Give me a high five! Nice to see What's you. What's going on? This is Josh! This is Josh. My friend that also happens to work at the mill, so he was gonna help me prep my purple heart wood to take home, so it was off to the shop we go. We're going this direction. Onward. <laughs> This is where my wonderful Century Mill journey came to an end, just me and my purple heart. All right, let's go make a one! 
So I have been doing a lot of thinking about what I want my wand to look like. I did some rough sketches. <laughs> I'll give you guys a better visual on a second camera. So this is kind of what I'm thinking. The first one I was like, okay, I really like this kind of spiral detail that you see on a lot of wands. And then I wanted to work in some kind of gem stone, something that felt magical to me, something blue, maybe purple. I don't know about colors. I was playing with blue here. Then option two, I took a lot of inspiration from Dumbledore's wand, which kind of has these like little bulbs that stick out and have these little divots in it. I like the organicness to this one. And then I also like that there's just one gem at the end. And then the third option, I liked that it kind of has the same detailing as the second one with the gem at the end, but I also worked in a gem in the middle. But anyways, I think I like option three the most, but there's like elements of all of them that I seem to like. So it needs to be comfortable, but I still like this idea that like the power gets pulled in through these crystals. That is essentially my plan. I really wanted to build the gems out of epoxy. I was gonna do my own casting and it was gonna be great. To do this properly and to make those epoxy gemstones look brilliant, I was going to need a pressure pot and I don't have that. And I couldn't get one on time. And I also don't know anybody who owns one. So I'm gonna have to work on that. I got thinking it would be really cool to use actual gemstones. So yesterday I got on the phone and I was chatting with a woman named Mary who is a healer. She recommended that I come sit down with her on her porch and we'll go through all the rocks that I picked out that I liked the most. I can hold them and then see which one I have a connection with and go from there. So let's go see Mary. A lot of trips in this episode. We're seeing lots of new things, wow. Every crystal has its own personality. Yes. Okay. This is Mary. As a hobby, Mary collects and sells gemstone crystals, and I tell you, she had a lot of amazing info to share. How do you choose? This is so specific, especially with what you're doing. Oh, I know, it, right? It's gotta be the right stones. Yep. So, what is the one thing first that makes you wanna pick it up? There's two specific spots. I okay. feel really drawn to these. Okay. And I feel really drawn to these. Okay. My suggestion is to hold one in one hand yep. and one in the other. And then you gently close your hand. You don't have to squeeze it. Just okay. gently close it and close your eyes. And you're going to notice that one feels different than the other. Now, it's not about shape or size. It's all about its personality or energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still feel really drawn to this one. Okay, good. This so we good. know that that for sure that's a good. is is one that's a good fit for you. Now yes. let's, just for fun, let's try this one. Yeah, so Mary and I went on to talk about crystals for a long time. I'm basically obsessed with her and her knowledge, but ultimately I made my connections and I walked away with my gemstones in hand and spirit. DIY friends, first and foremost, my hair is very purple. I will explain that later, but I just wanted to take a quick break from our wand making to enrich my mind with these awesome crates from the sponsor of today's episode, KiwiCo. KiwiCo creates super rad hands-on projects and toys designed to expose kids to concepts in STEAM, which is science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Each month, a new crate arrives with a new theme that teaches hands-on learning and fun. They have eight subscription lines, each catering to different age groups and topics. You're given all the supplies you need, detailed kid-friendly instructions, and an education magazine filled with content to learn even more about the crate's theme, and they ship to more than 40 countries. These crates are meant to inspire kids to see themselves as makers, engineering, and creating their own innovative designs and outcomes. I think these crates are are so dope. Honestly, if we can inspire and encourage our youth how to problem solve, innovate, and create, who knows what they'll do tomorrow? The two crates I have here are the Eureka and the Maker Crate. These crates are made for teens and adults 14 and up. The Eureka Crate teaches innovators how to apply principles of science and math to make awesome things you will love to use every day. 
The Maker Crate dives into new art and design tools and helps kids gain the creative confidence to turn their artistic visions into design realities. I mean, look how cool these are. I made this awesome electric pencil sharpener. And this weekend, I'm going to make this embroidered apron. Oh, that's so fun. Honestly, this was so much fun to make. And like, it's just such great value for both kids and adults. Like, I didn't know I was learning anything because I was just having so much fun. And I think that's the point of these kinds of crates. The best part is KiwiCo is giving me a special link that you guys can use to get 50% off your first month of any crate by going to kiwico.com slash DIY Danny. It's linked in the description box, so go check it out. Let's just work to empower kids to be fearless innovators of our future. Now that we've tackled this Creative Beast project, let's get back to mine. So we have been on an adventure. We have done two separate journeys, one for the right type of wood. This is the beautiful purple heart. I'm obsessed. And the second one was to find the right gemstones that are going to be kind of worked into our wand. The ones that I went with are the blue aura quartz. The crystals are first heated and then fine vaporized gold is bonded to the stone surface. I mean, how friggin' cool is that? This is just stunning, very much in line with what we were trying to create here and it looks so good against the purple heart. And then the other one, the Herkimer diamonds, these are just super dope. The energy that it receives is amplified. So I figured the Herkimer diamond is a great addition to the wand because then it's going to amplify the power of our aura stone. And then this one is called the spirits quartz. I mean, this would also be a cool piece to add on to the end of the wand to uh, work with this one. Like how cool would these two pieces work together? I just think these stones are so rad and I totally think that they are gonna make a great addition to our wand. I'm gonna put the gemstones aside because I need to start kind of breaking down this first piece of wood. Luckily, I have about six of these, so I have a few tries even if I screw it up. But I'm hoping I can do this on the first try. So I'm using the wands that I already own kind of as my guide. So I'm going to take this guy on the table saw. We're gonna cut it down to one inch and then I'm gonna flip it and then cut it again to one inch. So we're gonna have a perfect one inch cube. And then I feel like from there, we can just start whittling it down and making the shape that we want. I've never done anything like this before. So I have no idea what I'm doing, which is basically all of my projects. So. Wish me luck! Now the blue aura crystal definitely is going in the middle so that when the power, it's gonna work its way through the Herkimer diamonds, amplify it and then out the, out the wand. I'm so excited for this, this is so cool. This is a very terrible drawing, but essentially the two diamonds are gonna sit here, then we're gonna have the main aura gemstone here, and then we're gonna build a little handle in here. That's a pretty cool plan. Dirty does not even begin to <laughs> describe me. I am like, my face is just, wow. Wow. The wand is basically crafted. It's been whittled. So I ended up taking out a lot more on the bottom of it so that you would naturally believe that that is the bottom of the wand when you hold it because I'm gonna be putting the gems on the top. Yeah, I mean, it looks really clunky in the middle right now because obviously I need to take that out and then that is going to get replaced with my gemstone, my aura gemstone. I think I'm gonna leave it for today. I feel exhausted. I just, I don't even think I, I didn't break for food, not enough water. So I'm feeling a little delirious right now. I just wanted to get it done. This took forever. This is so cool.
We are going to finish this up tomorrow. I feel really good about it. So with that said, I will see you tomorrow. I made my hair look nice today for you guys. Do you like it? I like curled it and everything. Yeah? Anyways, we got a wand. <laughs> My goal today is, well, first of all, we need to cut this section out. This whole thing is where the gem's gonna sit. Second of all, I just really want this section to not look like a narwhal. Do you see how it like kind of looks like a duck or a narwhal? Maybe flatten this section out so it doesn't look so gnarly. <laughs> But uh, I think we, we have something going here and I, I'm excited. So we have a lot more work to do. So let's get to it. Now our wand is of two pieces. And now we can put a gem inside it. <laughs> So I think this is looking so much better. It's just that I feel like this is too big. So I think I might try to like chisel some sections out. I think if it's like less wide, it would be a lot easier to fit into this wand. Let's see if we can do it without ruining this. This is a very hard rock. By George, I think we got it. Actually, this looks really dope. Okay, and then, and then we do this. Oh yeah. <laughs> looks cool. I wanna get these glued in, so let's work fast. Well, I mean, if there's anything, I now made a very cool short wand with a crystal on the top of it. <laughs> These are feeling pretty good, so happy about that. I hate the waiting game. 24 hours later. Do my friends, it is a new day. I had to leave you yesterday because I just needed time to let the wand glue set up, but we got there. It is rock solid, but with all that glue dry waiting time, I did do something to my hair. <laughs> Your girl just needed a pick-me-up, you know what I mean? So I decided to tone it out and uh, really make it purple. I feel like a brand new anime character that brings me so much joy. We have our wand. It's good to go. Well, it's not great. We have to work to kind of smooth everything out, make it look nice and professional. And then I'm also going to sand down these bulbous shapes so that is nice in line with my gemstone. So that is our first step. We gotta clean this up. With that said, we are going into another magical montage. Let's go. basically created a paste with the wood glue and all of the shaving from the wood. And I just used that paste to fill in all the edges for the diamond. And um, it kind of just fills in the holes and makes it feel a little bit more seamless. I am feeling pretty good to go into some of the final carving details. We're almost done. It's very exciting. Come on, Wand, don't let me down. Dear 
friends, thank you so much for watching this crazy creative beast episode. Bruh. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section below, what did you think of my choices? What kind of choices would you have made if you were going to make your own wand? And a big thank you to KiwiCo for sponsoring this episode. A reminder that there is a link in the description box to get 50% off your first month on any of the crates, so don't miss out. And uh, make sure you stick to the end because I'm going to be testing this wand to see if it actually has some magical abilities. So as always, stay positive, stay creative, and keep on doing yeah, why? Why do you have to be so big? Kind of just wish you were like a tiny dog. Hmm. Weenus, small trocious. <laughs>